Hello everyone, I hope you all are fine and doing well. So today we are going to start off with an interesting yet important topic of quantitative aptitude, which is not only important for your placements, but also it is something which we all should be aware about due to its utility in everyday life. We use it for stuff like interest calculation, EMI calculation, figuring out loan installments, and even for the calculation of profit. And therefore, it is a topic which you cannot afford to miss out. Basically, it helps us understand money matter better. So let's dive into the first lecture without wasting any time. Now, to start a discussion on simple and compound interest, it is important for us to understand what interest is and on what factors interest is dependent. You need to understand simple and compound are two ways of calculating interest. But if I talk about interest, interest is dependent on some factors. So let's talk about these factors one by one. I believe most of us are already aware about these factors, but I want to talk specifically about a factor which is very important for the calculation of simple and compound interest, and that is principal. Usually, we denote principal with P, and it is uh, represented in form of rupees. Yes. So, if someone asks you what is principal, principal is the amount on which interest is calculated. So, let's say I have borrowed some money from the bank. Since I'm using their money, so I have to pay them interest or uh, you can also understand interest as let's say I have lent my money to the bank. Since I have given my money to bank, so the bank has agreed upon to give me some interest. So interest is the amount of money which is either payable to me or I have to pay to someone else, right? Okay. Uh, the second factor on which interest is dependent is rate. Usually we denote rate with R and we represent uh, this rate in percentage terms uh, per annum basis. So let's say the rate of interest is 10% per annum. So what 10% per annum means? 10% per annum means that I have to pay a interest of 10% on what? 10% on, on the principal, the amount which I have borrowed from the bank. So let's say I have borrowed 1000 rupees. So I have to pay 10% of 1000 in the form of interest because I'm using their money. Likewise, if I lent my money to bank, the so bank has to pay me 10% on my money. So this is how interest is calculated by using rate. Okay. Uh, the another factor on which interest is dependent is time. For how much time I have invested my money or for how much time I have borrowed the money. Usually, uh, time is represented in the form of years or some part of years. Uh, in some cases, you would realize that the time will be given to you in month form, right? But usually, what they do, they give time in terms of years. So, time is also an important factor on which interest is dependent. And now, let me talk about one important keyword that is amount, where many students get generally confused. Uh, they start to think that amount is the same amount. No. You have to understand that amount is a contextual word. So when I say uh, a sum of money, yes. So here amount means a sum of money on which the interest is calculated. So when I say that I have to pay certain interest on this amount. So here amount does not mean the amount which we are referring here. So amount is a contextual word, which I'll come to know after analyzing the context. So here when I'm using amount, Amount is a generalized word which I'm using for sum of money. But when I'm using amount here, amount is working as a specialized word which refers to the sum of money which one has to either pay or receive after the end of the given time period. So what I'm trying to tell you that amount is the sum of principal plus the interest. So in case you have borrowed, let's say 1000 rupees, let's say you have borrowed 1000 rupees from bank. So the principal amount is 1000 and let's say rate is 10% per annum. So if I ask you how much money you have to, you know, pay back to the bank after the end of one year, you would say, sir, the interest chargeable is 10% of the principal, that is rupees 100. And the total amount, the total amount which I have to pay back is 1000, which is the money which I have borrowed. I have to pay back the principal amount as well. In addition to this, I have to pay the interest also. So what is amount? Amount is actually principal and interest put together. 
I hope through this you were able to understand what amount means here. Okay. Uh, after understanding these factors, it is now time to start off with simple interest. We'll come to compound interest as well, but first we'll talk about simple interest only. So now using this data, I'm going to show you the calculation of simple interest year by year. So the first column is for the years. The second one is the principal on which the interest would be applicable. In the third column, I'm going to show you the interest which I'll be receiving at the end of a particular year. And here, I'm going to write down the amount at the end of that year. So for that, let's assume principal is rupees 1000 and rate is 10% per annum at simple interest. Okay. So if I ask you, uh, let's do this calculation for the first year. So for the first year, if I ask you, what is the principal? You would say, sir, principal is rupees 1000 because we are just starting. It's 1000. And now if I ask you what interest you are going to receive, you would say, sir, we'll be receiving interest over this principal at what rate? At 10%. So 10% of the principal. Once you calculate this, you will get the value of interest as rupees 100. Now if I ask you, what is the amount due at the end of the first year? So towards the end of first year, what is the total amount which is payable to me? You would say, sir, the total amount which you will receive is the principal 1000 plus the interest the interest was 100 and once you add this you will get the value of amount so after one year this principal of 1000 will give me an amount of rupees interest where an extra 100 rupees is nothing but the value of interest so let's do this calculation for second year as well now for the second year if i ask you what is the principal now this is where you need to be a little careful Although the amount towards the end of first year was 1100, but the principal at the start of second year is going to be same. It's going to be 1000. So as the name says simple, in the similar fashion, you would realize that the value of principal would remain same. It will never change for any given year. What simple interest says that we are not going to change the value of principal. The value of principal would remain same. And therefore, when you do the calculation of interest, so if I ask you uh, of what value you are going to calculate 10%, it will again be same. The principal value is 1000. So again, I'll be calculating 10% of 1000. That is 100. Now let us calculate the cumulative interest in these two years. Cumulative interest would be 100 plus 100. 100 in the first year and the other 100 in the next year. So that cumulative interest value would be 200 rupees. So what with the amount due to me at the end of second year, you would say, sir, 1000 was the principal. This is how we calculate the amount. Plus, now I'm going to add the cumulative interest, that is 200. I'll get the amount which is due to me at the end of second year. Let's do this calculation for one more year. Now for the next year, means the third year, so if I ask you what is the value of principal for the third year, it will again be 1000. The value of principal never changes in the case of simple interest. The interest that would be paid to you, it will always be calculated on the principal value, the amount which you had deposited at the very start. So again, you would be calculating 10% of your principal, that is 1000. And again, you will receive the same interest rupees 100. What will be the value of cumulative interest? You would say, sir, cumulative interest is going to be this 200 plus 100. That would be 300. So 300 is the value of cumulative interest. So what is the amount due at the end of third year? You would say, sir, let's add principal and the cumulative interest received in three years. So the amount is going to be 1300. So the salient feature which one needs to learn looking at this table is, if you look at the principal, the principal would remain same for any given year. It will be the amount which I have invested at the starting of the year. If you talk about interest, the interest will always be calculated over principal. So I'll always calculate 10% over 1000. And that is the reason why I always get 100 as interest for any given year. Do not worry, I'll stress on these points again when we discuss compound interest. But for now, let us try to formalize whatever we have learned here. So based on the table which I have seen a while ago, what I can understand is that in case of simple interest, for any given year, for second year, for first year, for third year, 
so for any let me write down one year for any one year the simple interest will always be r percent of what r percent of p or i can write down the same thing as r percent of p so for any one year if interest is r percent of p uh, can i say that for a time period of let's say t years so for t years if i want to do calculation for this period t years the uh, since for one year it is r percent of p so r percent of p this is for one year and for t years it will be multiplication by t right and this is a classical formula i hope many of us are already aware which we used to find out interest in case of simple interest what is the formula p into r into t upon 100 and this in turn gives us the value of interest i'm repeating in left hand side this is interest this is where many of us make mistake this will never give you the value of amount this gives us the value of interest now to uh, tell you where the examiner is going to fool you uh, let me show you one example i take a loan of rupees 12 lakhs for three years at simple interest at the end of three years I make a one time payment of rupees 15 lakh to clear up the loan and interest. So I am returning the principal amount as well as the interest which is applicable. So find the rate of interest charge. Now I know the formula P into R into T upon 100. Right? What is the principal? Principal is the amount which I have uh, borrowed, it was 12 lakh rate is something which i want to calculate time for three years okay and this will be equals to 15 no please understand 15 is the amount so you cannot write down 15 in the left hand side we write down interest here not the amount and this is where you can make the silly mistake so out of this 15 if you try to understand in this 15 when i'm you know paying back rupees 15 lakh to clear off my loan so I'm not only paying the interest amount, I'm actually paying the principal as well as the interest. So if I ask you what is the interest out of 15, you would say sir, 3 lakh is the interest. So the value which I'm going to write down in the left hand side, it's going to be 3 lakh. So uh, interest of 3 lakh is payable on this principal in 3 years. So let us try to find out the value of R. Okay, let's do the calculation. This 3 will cancel this 3. So the value of R is going to be 100 by 12. And what is 100 by 12? Something which I'm already aware about. It's 8.33%. An absolutely easy question. The only purpose of doing this question with you is that you can understand when I multiply these three factors, P, R, and T, I do not get the value of amount. I get the value of interest. And this is where they can fool you. Okay, so that's the only thing which you have to learn through this question. Now, I want to discuss one more problem based on simple interest where we'll have one more value addition. So please read the question carefully. A sum of money kept at simple interest amount to rupees 15,000 in how many years? In three years. So, an amount is kept at simple interest which amounts to rupees 15,000. So, this amount is actually principal plus the interest which uh, this person has gained in three years okay and then the same principal will amount to rupees 18,000 in five years find the principal so what I'm given with let me write down the data first uh, I'm given with that the amount is rupees 15,000 in three years so using the formula can you convert this information into mathematical form very easy you know that uh, principal is something which i have to calculate so i'm not aware about principal rate rate also i i believe is not given time is three years so p r t by 100 this will return you the value of interest now if you look at this value 15000 carefully i want you to realize that this is the value of amount not the value of interest so how would you fetch out the value of interest First, you need to understand that 15,000 is the amount which we are referring to the principal and the interest received in three years. So, for interest value, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove 
the value of principal from the amount 15,000. In this way, I'll be able to find out the interest received in this given period, three years. Likewise, I know the other data, 18,000 rupees is received in how many years? In five years. So principal, again, not specified, rate, not specified. In five years, what will be the total interest received? Again, you would remove the value of principal from the amount 18,000. And this way, you would be able to find out interest. Now, if you look at these two as two equations, try to find out a way using which you can find out the value of principal from here. One way would be that you can subtract the two equations or what you can do here, you can divide the two equations. Let me divide the two equations. If I divide the two equations, what will I get? I'll get 15,000 minus P, get the left hand side values, 18,000, sorry it's 1,000, 18,000 minus P equals to, since P into R and P into R and also 100 is common, so these things will get cancelled. So I'll only be left with 3 upon 5 in the right hand side, yes. And then simply cross multiply, you will get the answer. What is 15 into 5? It's 75. What is 18 into 3? It's uh, 54. So uh, 75,000 minus 54,000 on one side. And on the other side, uh, 5p and 3p, the difference between 5p and 3p. Okay. So after doing this thing, you will get 2p here. And the difference would be 21,000. So from here, you would say, sir, the value of P would be 10,500. Now, the way I have solved this question here, it does not create any understanding of simple interest. In fact, this is not the elegant way of solving this question. You could have answered this question more easily had you used the learning which we just had a while ago. What learning? That interest remains same in the case of simple interest. Interest remains same in the case of SI. Interest would always be R percent of P in any one year or in any year. If you use this learning, the answer of same question can be calculated in much less time, more easily. Let's see how. So let me write down this data again. In three years, the amount is equals to 15,000 and in five years, the same principle will change to 18,000. So if I ask you, what is the total interest received in this duration? In duration of two years, you would say, sir, in duration of two years, 3,000. And as a matter of fact, I know that interest remains same for any one year. So if in two years, it is 3,000, I can find out the interest received in any year. It would be 1,500, but this is not required. What I want to find out, I want to find out principal. At the very start, it means when the first year was not completed, what was the value of principal? So what is the difference here? You would say, sir, the difference is 3. In 2 years, if I have received an interest of 3000, what is the interest received in 3 years? It's very easy. In 2 years, I have received 3000. So in 1 year, I must have received 1500. So in 3 years, it would be 3 into 1500. That would be 4500. What is this 4500? This 4500 is the interest in these cumulative three years. So if you remove this 4500 interest from this amount, you will again reach to the same answer 10,500, which is the principal, which was the amount which I have kept at the start of the year, 10,500. So can you see how easy it is to get the same answer by using the learning that interest remains same for any given year? R percent of P. So this is another value addition which I want you to have here. So with this, we have come to the end of our first lecture. I hope you were able to understand everything today. If not, please write down your doubts in the comment box. Uh, in the next lecture, I am going to show you the working of compound interest. Also, in the next lecture, we are going to see how compound interest is different from simple interest with the help of an example. So there are going to be many more learnings in the next lecture. Stay tuned. Thank you and have a nice day.